It's not, you know, is it possible that the features, the facial features of Mount Rushmore were produced by strictly natural causes? It's possible, but how reasonable is that? Given, given the specific facial features. Well, I mean, I, I think you were onto something. Um, if you, the, the probability that you get a particular hand at bridge, right, is very, very small. And, um, but the thing is, well, you get it. Well, there it is. So, um, you're arguing, you arguing after the fact. If things had been different, right, uh, well, then we probably wouldn't be sitting here and somebody else would be sitting or nobody. So we don't know. So I think this is uh, reasoning after the fact and, and it has no, um, it has no bearing on, on, uh, on this question of, um, of causation. John Leslie, who is a well-known cosmologist, wrote the book Universes, who actually is one of the first ones to propose this idea of the possibility of multiple universes. He gives this illustration. He says, what if you were standing before a firing squad of 50 men? You, you put the blindfold on, they take aim, and they shoot. All 50 of them, say from 10 feet away. And you survive. Would you just say, wow, I'm just lucky. I sur I, I, I'm just, it's just, must have been coincidence that I survived. I think we would, we would not be satisfied with that kind of explanation. I would. <laughs> <laughs> the front row. Yeah. Um, my question is for Professor Green. Um, you had basically a three prong argument where you said that um, you talked about the cause of the universe, um, the existence of human conscience, and like the anthropic principle. Right. And um, I, know, I don't know your name, but you said you call that like a, an argument to a deistic God. You said you're okay with that. So, no, I'm, well, I'm saying we don't have to discuss much about that. That's something we can. Right. Accept. Yeah. So, okay. So, I'm wondering, um, since we are here to talk about theism, can you bridge that gap from um, saying some theistic God to saying well, it has some sort of personal relational qualities? Like, can you take that argument and then bridge the gap to a theistic God? Right. I mean, obviously, if, if there is no evidence that God exists, then it's a mute point. But I would say, given that, what we, the, there, I think there is evidence for God's existence, then the question becomes which of the many gods that are out there? And I would argue, for, as a, I think, what, what I think, what I find, I, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the major religions out there. What I find interesting about Christianity, in contrast to Islam, in, in contrast to Buddhism, of course, Buddhism, most Buddhists are not theists, but the one interesting fact is that Christians can appeal to that Jesus rose from the dead has a historical fact that is historically that there are there is historical evidence to support that fact, that that claim. And so I would argue that, of course, that's a whole other debate in itself, but I would argue that's what distinguishes, in my view, Christian theism from the alternatives. Well, but even if there is, uh, even if Jesus existed, there's no evidence whatsoever. No, I didn't say just, Jesus existed, he rose, he, it was a resurrection. But th there's no evidence for that. I mean, well, I think there is. Well, I think there's not. <laughs> but, well, let's start debate number two. Yeah, right. <laughs> No scientific evidence. Well, it's a historical issue. It's not a scientific issue. Just like there's no well, scientific evidence. Okay. So there's no scientific evidence that Abraham Lincoln was president, right? So do right? you believe that Satya Sai Baba raised this, this one guy in, in, where was it? I have that written down. Well, we're not talking about empirical We're talking about, now you're talking about empirical evidence. Well, no, we're talking I'm talking historical about history. Evidence. This was in 1953. This is, this is history. And there was okay. actually an eyewitness to it. This is history. This is this is documented. People 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 attest to it. So you believe? So you, so you believe that he did that? No, I do not. I, I, so why should what I? I'm saying is extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. It's not just some people reported this. You need way more evidence for something that that proves that the, na the, the laws of nature were were exempted there. Well, I think there are arguments, but we you know obviously beyond the scope of this class or beyond the scope of this class beyond the scope of this debate. Seen your hand a lot. If God does exist, and it appears He speaks to His followers on a daily basis, why would He allow the highest form of His creation, us, to destroy the earth, its creatures, and its cultures that He worked so hard to create, without even warning them of their folly? Even today, the followers hardly say a word in uh, the Earth's defense. Mostly, it's said by those blaming environmentalists. The followers, well, yeah, I, I don't know how that would count against God's existence. What it may count against is God's followers. 
right? It, it could be construed as an argument from right. And, and, and as to your claim that God speaks to people daily, uh, I would distinguish between revelation in terms of God revealing Himself in, in, in some kind of verbal form, as opposed to say what I would call maybe the, the guidance of the Spirit, which is not of the same order. So, uh, you know, I don't. I, it, well, once again, I think if he's God, if God does exist, and he has, certainly as the creator and the Lord of the universe, uh, he has the right to speak when he desires, not when we desire. Right? So I, I don't see why how that would function as an argument against God's existence. Like I said, it may function against people who follow him. Next question. Yeah, I'm going to ask you Please speak up, please. I do. Is there a question? That's it. I don't, and I don't see a problem with that. If you're willing to grant that there are immaterial objects, like numbers, like propositions, like logic, and like God, then I think that certainly that it, it's... I do believe in angels and demons, and I believe in souls, which I think be immaterial objects, yes. All right. so, but the question then, of course, becomes, well, how do you decide what to uh, believe in? Why do you believe in angels and demons? Why not in the devil? Why not in the in unicorns sure. or fairies? Right. And the reason I would say is because I believe that God has spoken and revealed himself through scripture, and that's how we know those things. So you believe that the scripture is the word of God? Right. And why do you do that? Because I believe that God exists, and, he, and I, I would expect that God, if he does exist, and want to communicate with this with this creation. But but I mean, there are so many holy books out there. Right, but, not, but we could we could yeah. go through the whole argument. But yeah. okay, uh, right here in the gray. The question is, does God exist, Professor Gary? If God does exist right now, He is. What's He up to? In your own personal thinking, what makes you think that? Well, I don't know what He's doing. I don't know what He's doing right now. Well, He's the, He's He's God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if God exists, I mean this, if God exists, and if, if he's as theists take him to be, that is, he is an immaterial being, a personal being, that's transcendent, then why would you expect us to know what he's doing at this present moment, unless he revealed himself to us? Well, but, but that's exactly what you claim, right? You, you, you uh, theists claim to know exactly what he wants us to do. That we uh, that we yeah, uh, teach sex education by abstinence. That we don't distribute condoms in sub-Saharan Africa and all these things. <laughs> well, for some of you, that, you know, for some of you can't explain the objectivity, objectivity of morality. You know, uh, <laughs> I don't know if we want to go that route in terms of moral arguments. But once again, my claim is this: if God exists, then He is likely has revealed Himself. That doesn't mean He always has, He always reveals Himself, and then He has the right as God to choose when He does reveal Himself. And I think there is good evidence to believe that he has revealed himself through scripture. Like I said, just because I don't have, uh, you know, that's, but that's, it's unfair to say, oh, well, that's just an assertion. No, I think there's an argument there, but we just don't have time to get into it, unless you want to. I don't think there is evidence. Okay, okay I'm afraid we're going to have to move to the closing remarks. Thank you very much. Um, but first, I would like to invite you all to our next debate, which will be on April 6th, with the topic of, is evolution compatible with Christian belief. Um, so now uh, we will allow each speaker a few minutes to conclude with their closing remarks. And uh, Dr. Irwin, would you like to start us off? Okay, so, um, well, this was interesting. Um, I don't think we have convinced many people, maybe nobody, um, but, but maybe we, uh, we, we, um, we have led people to think about this issue. And I think that's a good thing. Um, so my basic argument was that um, in order to believe something you need uh, convincing evidence and while well, convincing um, not to yourself but to others. Um, why? Well because if that is not the case then individual people or groups can believe contradictory things and that is not our understanding of the world works. So that leads to relativism. So if you, if you subscribe to, uh, to that um, to that principle that we need convincing evidence in order to believe something, well then in order to believe in the existence of God you need convincing evidence. Now, um, well, theistic people, um, they, they, will, they will say they have convincing evidence, well, 
it's just not convincing the to the majority of the people in, uh, in or well if we take one particular god which we have to do because with each theistic belief system come uh, very specific features that are attributed to that god and uh, no one can uh, have convincing arguments um, that, that are so convincing to convince all the rest of the humanity we have those arguments in science there's no such thing as islamic physics or uh, Buddhist mathematics. Uh, we all agree across the, the world on, on these scientific and mathematical principles and what, what we uh, accept as, uh, as convincing evidence. Only in the, po in, in, in the area of religion we do not do that. And even more so, even theists reject thousands of gods and other religions. They do that by saying, oh, this is not convincing evidence. Islam is not good enough. Um, Mohammed didn't ride on a, ride on a, on a horse to heaven. No, 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 this is just a myth. But Jesus went up to heaven on a, on a, on a cloud. Well, that is true. So, um, I think if, if you're consistent in your view, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to be consistent all the way uh, through and also reject your own, um, your own God that you hold so dear. Thanks. Well, thank you, Martin, for a lively debate. I think it's great to get these, I agree with you again, that there, it's good to get these ideas out there. Um, I, I just find it interesting that um, his arguments didn't really address the major traditional arguments that are, that are long-standing, long-held, and been long debated. Um, and I think, once again, when you say convincing evidence, uh, I would say as a philosopher, and you look at the history of science, and you look at the history of philosophy, about any theory that was once held, philogiston, for example, which you brought up, was once regarded without question that it existed. Now nobody believes in it. Uh, so I, I think your confidence in science, well, I, I, I have a high, view of con a high view of science, and I, do, I also have confidence, I think it's overstated. And I think when we talk about convincing evidence, I, I, I dare you to find me one proposition that you, don't, you can't find someone who disagrees with it. Uh, in fact, if anything, I think, and I, and I disagree with postmodernism, but as a, as a movement, but postmodern, you know, postmodernism has raised serious questions about uh, the so-called objectivity of science. And, there's, and to a certain extent, there are some valid points there. So I, I think uh, uh, when you say convincing evidence, I think you're a little bit over-optimistic in terms of what constitutes convincing evidence with regards to science, and I think, it's, uh, as a result, it's, it's unfair to other areas of knowledge, including theological knowledge. <laughs> all right. On behalf of the Socratic Club, we would like we would like to uh, thank you all for coming. Um, if you are interested in either the uh, Socratic Club or um, in future events, please come speak to either myself or another member. And uh, again, thank you all for coming. Good night.